what makes them special probably is the fact that they they tap into what a violinist really needs in a violin to make to make it sound great. So it's a it's a mixture probably of maths, um, because it's quite an exact science to to produce an amazing violin, and also the ears to to know what to what what is necessary for a violin to sound great. So it's quite an impressive craft, I think. You know, every instrument needs a service every few years. And uh, my instrument, I played it for 10 years, and I was touring nonstop, so it wasn't really in a good shape. And uh, that's how I first met Martin. He didn't even look at me. He took the violin and he... I was 12. We broke a violin with a friend of mine, and, you know, we had to fix it. So I went to the local violin maker in Slovakia, and I was amazed. All the instruments, wood, varnish, tools, chisels, and I just knew. A lot of very talented makers out there today, um, often competing with old instruments as well. Um, but I think this really does sound good, and, and I certainly don't think that people would imagine that it was made two years ago. I think that's quite remarkable, because it doesn't have that really, really new sound, which is quite a feat for a violin maker. I always look for older wood. It has to be seasoned. It has to be right wood. I use the spirit varnish. It's the old technique. I came back and he opened the case and I, and I didn't recognize it. He found few little cracks. sounded like a completely fresh and strong instrument. Probably playing solo Bach, I would imagine, is the ultimate test for, for a violin. Because it's so exposed, you know. So if it, if it sounds good with solo Bach, I think you're on to a good thing. There's hundreds of new violins. And they all, they all are the same. They're very strong. They have very strong uh, sound, very high pitched. And you have to play them for maybe one or two years before they open. But Martin's violin, which was amazing, absolutely amazing. When I took it, when I started to play it, it has something which practically no new instruments have. It had this rich, kind of aristocratic, very low, rich sound. I think Martin is more like a, like a doctor, because he, he doesn't treat violin as a mechanical device. He talks to it, he, he listens to it, he finds the little signs of illness and then he administers the, administers the treatment. Martin told me that apparently Guarneri used to burn violins that didn't work out for him, so um, it can be quite painstaking. And the same thing as um, practicing, if you're a musician, a very dedicated musician, um, there are ups and downs on the road to trying to, to, to really um, get the message across of what you want to say in a piece of music. His attention to detail is incredible. I saw that when, when he uh, cured my violin. I would say he is very dedicated, very focused and very passionate about what he does. He has this unique gift of understanding the, the wood, understanding the sound, and he is on a path. The work that he's doing is, is really exciting. And I wish that he stays on this path because he, he brings a lot of joy in this world. Back home in Slovakia, 
We have very nice word for this. Dusha. The soul. That's what I'm trying to give to the violin. Um, and I hope that lots, lots of violinists get the chance to play on his violins.